In this worksheet, we're going to solve a problem where we have an unknown chemical. We're being given the percent composition of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, the unknown substance has been dissolved in benzene and the freezing point of the solution has been measured and compared to the freezing point of benzene. And we are ultimately going to figure out the molecular formula of this compound, this unknown compound based on all this data. So we're gonna start by calculating the molality of the solution. As a reminder, the molality is calculated by taking the moles of the solute. The, the uh, unknown substance is our solute in this problem. And we divide that by the kilograms of the solvent. And in this problem, our solvent is benzene. So we do not know how many moles of the solute we have. We're told that there's one gram, but we don't know the molecular formula, which means we don't know the molecular weight. So we can't convert this one gram into moles. So we're not gonna be able to calculate molality using this equation right here. We can calculate the molality from the change in the freezing point for the solution. The change in freezing point for any solution is the um, freezing point constant Kf times the molality of the solution. We know the change in the freezing point because we have the freezing point of benzene and the freezing point of the solution, and the problem gave us the value of Kf. So we can rearrange this equation to solve for molality. We're gonna take the change in the freezing point divided by the Kf. In these equations, the change in the freezing point is an absolute value, so you should never express it as a negative number. Um, the difference in our freezing point here is gonna be 5.5 minus 3.37. Again, I'm just looking for an absolute value, so I don't, I don't want it to be a negative number. Divide that by 5.12, our freezing point constant. And this is going to give us a value of 0 0.416 molality. So there's our molality of the solution. Now the next problem wants us to calculate the molecular weight of the unknown, the molecular weight, the grams per mole. This one is gonna be a little bit tricky, uh, how we're actually gonna go about doing this. We are, so we know that the molality is the relationship between the moles of the solute and the kilograms of the solvent. We know the molality, we know the amount of sol sol solvent we have, we could calculate that, and therefore we can calculate the number of moles. Molecular weight is grams per mole. So if we can figure out the number of moles and we do have the number of grams, we could plug all of that in to get the molecular weight. So that's what we're going to do. Now again, that's, it's kind of tricky, so we're gonna go a little slow here. The molality is the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. And we know the molality, we just calculated it. We also know the kilograms of the solvent, benzene, so we can solve for the number of moles. So I'm gonna rearrange this equation. The moles of our solute, the moles of our unknown, is going to be the molality times the kilograms of benzene. I'm gonna be consistent, I'm not gonna write benzene, I'm gonna write solvent. The molality is 0.416, and the solvent mass in units of kilograms is 8.5 divided by 1,000, 0.0085. So that gives us, for the number of moles, 0 0.003536 moles of our solute. That isn't the answer. The answer is the molecular weight. The molecular weight is grams per mole. We have figured out the moles and the problem told us the number of grams. So for grams per mole, it is one gram per the number of moles that we just calculated. 0 0.003536 moles, 282.8 grams per mole. 
For the next problem, we need to calculate the empirical formula of the unknown. This is something that we haven't done for a long time. This comes from the percent composition data. Uh, so for a minute, we're not going to be using any of these calculations that we just did. We're just going to be focusing purely on the percent composition data. The percent composition data tells us that we have 80.78 grams of, or 80.78 percent carbon. 80.78 percent carbon, we're going to pretend like that means 80.78 grams of carbon, and we're going to figure out how many moles of carbon we have. Hopefully as I start doing this problem, it'll look familiar to you. Like I said, we haven't done this type of problem in a really long time. But uh, as a reminder, we're taking all of these percentages. We are turning them into grams based on a, like a, a 100 gram sample, and then we're calculating the number of moles of each one of the atoms. So if we had 100 grams of this unknown, there would be 80.78 grams of carbon. Each carbon is 12 grams. That would mean that we would have 6.73 moles of carbon for hydrogen. If we had a 100 gram sample, it would be 13.56 grams of hydrogen, 13.56 grams of hydrogen, Hydrogen is one mole, one gram. So we would have 13.56 moles of hydrogen. And we're just trying to get a mole to mole to mole ratio. For oxygen, 5.66%. We're interpreting that as 5.66 grams of oxygen. One mole of oxygen is 16 grams. 5.66 divided by 16 is 0.35375 moles of oxygen. This is a mole to mole to mole ratio. We want this to be in better numbers, whole numbers. So we're going to locate the smallest of these numbers and divide everything by that small number. Our smallest number is the amount of oxygen, 0.35375. So everything gets divided by 0.35375. 375, 0.35375, and this gives us 6.73 divided by 0.35375, 19 moles of carbon, 13.56 divided by 0.3575 gives us 37.9 moles of hydrogen, uh, we'll change that to 38. 38 moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. So this tells us that the empirical formula is C19H38O. The last problem asks us to calculate the molecular formula of the unknown. We know that the molecular weight is 282 grams per mole. Let's see what the weight is of this empirical formula, C19H38O. If we add that up, 19 times 12 for the carbon atoms, plus 38 times 1 for the hydrogen atoms, plus 16, not equals, plus 16 times 1 for the oxygen atom, gives us a molecular weight of 282. That's the molecular weight of our empirical formula, and that's also the molecular weight of the actual molecule. So for this situation, for this particular molecule, the empirical formula is the molecular formula. The molecular formula is C19H38O.